I am thrilled to have Morgan Oaks with me today. Morgan, you and I have this weird long history together and we've known each other from our hometown. We reunited a few years ago. You did some coaching with me and you're just this beautiful spirit. And I'm going to let you introduce yourself because you're a kick-ass human and you there's a million things I will never cover. Uh, and then we're going to get into some stuff today. So thank you for joining me and being here today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I was excited to hear that you were launching this. So honored to be on it. And yeah, I think like just to touch base on that, I like to not run by it. Grew up in a really small town in Wyoming. And so then like years later, you and I get in contact and we've got these like kind of parallel lives as far as like personal growth, trying to help each other, help others, as well as helping ourselves uh, through our own growth processes. And I think that's been pretty rare for us, yeah. uh, experiencing that as far as uh, from where we came from. And so just, yeah, so grateful to be on this. And uh, yeah, for the introduction, my name is Morgan Oaks. I'm a a number of things as well. I'm a uh, 20 year chiropractor uh, and I do that part time now. I'm also a certified high performance coach, a shamanic practitioner. In my path to like learning who I was, uh, I just kept adding other things into the mix that I could help people with or got really good at referring out in those things that I just weren't my in my wheelhouse. Um, and probably the last thing I'm really integrating now is I've I've had kind of a lot of uh, intuitive pressure to start working directly with men. Mm -hmm. And so I'm taking men on trips to Mexico to do like deep uh, initiation type personal growth, uh, as well as launching an online men's men's coaching program. And I think that encapsulates at least enough for us to, to yeah. dive in. Yeah. So there's so many parts of my journey with you that I, I think are important. So part of the reason of doing this series is I have a whole group of humans in my life that I serve in a mental health capacity, in my teaching practice, in my, my speaking practice. And I have all these amazing resources at my fingertips uh, of humans who have been on this journey. And one of the things that I love about you and I and our connection later in life is that there is this deep ingrained messaging of growing up in Wyoming that I think both of us have had to unpack and really evaluate. And as you know, I'm in the Wyoming Guard. I serve a lot of men. I work with a lot of men. And, and I have a love of men that is very deep. As a woman who's also a strong woman, who's done the feminist side, like the femininity and the masculinity of those sides is so important. And the reason I reached out to you, Morgan, is because I think you've unpacked some of that messaging that men get, mm. those pieces that are so deeply ingrained in how we grow up in certain cultures. And I'm just wondering if you can speak a little bit to that in your own journey, in your own sort of, you know, growth. Yeah. One of the first things that came to mind when you were when when you were sharing is just really around possibility. Mm. Right? Like when we were growing up, you know, for me to go away from to college, I became a mechanical engineer first. Um, and the reality is like that went well beyond even what was kind of expected of me. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a lot of things I could have done that I probably would have been kind of like base level happy, probably income happy, you know, life experience happy. But I knew that it didn't encapsulate everything that I was wanting. And for me, I really wanted to go for something difficult. I really wanted to push myself. And that ended up happening, you know, certainly with education and career, but also with like what I could do physically. Uh, it's kind of dove into what I can do mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And so the big first thing for me was just allowing a possibility that was bigger than what I was mm -hmm. um, kind of typecast for. Yeah, love right. Yeah. yeah. And that was that's what started opening things up. And then I would bump into these like glass ceilings that I'm like, oh, this is me. It's not where I'm living. It's not career. It's not that woman I'm in relationship with. Like, this is mine. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a balance, but especially for men, like we do have to be kind of egoically strong in that we have to know who we are. 
Mm. We have to know what we believe in. And I think a lot of people have pushed away from like, oh, ego, like we're supposed to dissolve that. But no, like ego is the thing that gets you to stand up when somebody else in your um, military group is out of integrity, right? right? It's what gets you to step up in your friend group or family group when somebody's out of integrity or things are going in a bad direction. Right. It's how you can really define and know who that you are, you know, who you are so that you can make those decisions that seem right to you and it, it takes a strength and a healthy ego to be able to to know thyself and to take action in those moments that are important so that's one half of the equation but i think we can get typecast and like never breaking down never admitting fault never admitting that there's a question mark on our heart not complete you know knowingness and so the other half that i've really leaned into is like when i realize that I'm plateaued, that I don't have the answers, that maybe what was an integrity in my 20s might not be an integrity in my 30s or 40s, mm. you know, and then starting to go after those, those limitations and just being courageous and curious and, and, um, and then seeing how that unfolds, knowing that uh, the song that I always quote from Wyoming, when you're going through hell, keep on going. Yeah, right? I think it's so true because a lot of people end up living in hell, relationship, career, health levels, you know, yeah. level of mental, emotional happiness, and they just stay there. They freeze. And so for me, it's about find those places and then do what you can to move beyond them. Love that. Love, love, love. So many pieces about that. One of the pieces that I find so fascinating in my work with men is this messaging around vulnerability, not being a strength vulnerability being a weakness and this mantra of vulnerability and strength can actually exist at the same time yeah. both can be true and i'm just curious if you have thoughts on that i would imagine you probably have a few yeah well background in engineering and knowing about metals but also that crossover with the military and if we think about a sword mm -hmm. right if you create a sword in such a way that it's the the hardest thing out there it has mm -hmm. no flexibility and ultimately what happens is it breaks right so in that you need a a, a balance between really good strength but also kind of a, a softness and flexibility mm -hmm. uh, and i think that's true for us as well and that's that is one of the hardest places when you create this persona or ego of like having the answers being strong um, having grit, resilience, all these words that we really are attracted to through the personal growth realm and, and, and being a strong woman or man. But within that, we've seen what it looks like when people don't admit that they need help, there's an issue, they've plateaued, um, you know, and, and when they don't reach out, then we, we've seen those people break. Or yeah. things go extremely sideways or them even crash relationships, careers, you know, lives. For sure. One of the things that I've always loved about you, Morgan, even when I knew you in our high school days and then when I reconnected with you when I was on my journey of looking for a high performance coach and I find out that you and I are in the same worlds together and mm -hmm. I'm like, Morgan, like the Morgan I know is doing this work. Like, how does that work? What? what does that happen? You are one of the most curious humans on the planet. Like you, curiosity to me, when I think about curiosity, I think a lot about you. And mm -hmm. the, the reason I think about you is because again, we grew up in this small place where a lot of people stay, not very many people leave. If you leave, you're being very brave. If you leave and you have gone on these major journeys in your life all over the world, really, to explore these different facets of yourself. And I'm just curious about maybe one or two lessons that you've received in your life when you've gotten curious, like what was the value of having curiosity in your life? Yeah. Intuition is a major through line for all the work that I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's what my TEDx talk is about. It's uh, it was a big part of my like spiritual awakening Mm -hmm. But if we get away from words that get confusing, the reality is we all have those, that internal guidance system, right? Mm -hmm. Great athletes have it. Moms, you know, certainly have it. Hunters have it. Like anybody who is able to gather wisdom that doesn't come from their mind, right? Mm -hmm. And blend that. We all have access to that. So 
The biggest piece I think that's important for curiosity is we know those things we're interested in, Mm. right? It's that thing like, oh, I should read that book. I should read that book. And then somebody comes to you, hey, I have a book for you to read. You should already know the name of it because you've already been thinking about it, right? Um, Or like, yeah, I, you know, yes, this is a great career, but I feel really flatlined. But what I really would be interested in is this other thing. You know, and even if it's getting on a website, looking at what it would be like to, you know, take some online classes or go to school in the evenings. Like if you have a curiosity about something, it's usually really low um, energy and expense entry point to just start checking it out and see if that's, you know, maybe it's a hobby, maybe it's a side passion, or maybe it's that thing that has been trying to like get you to to lean into it your whole life. So I'm big on really following those nudges and just, just seeing what's out there. Love that. In your work with men, do you find that when you give them permission to follow those nudges, their whole world is starting to like open up and break free and it gets pretty exciting? Yeah. And for some people, it's the question, right? Some people we lean more into courage. Yeah. You know, cause I think we all know those places where we're playing small, holding back, not asking the question, not opening the conversation, not, you know, making the phone call. And mm-hmm. so sometimes it's a simple clarity and, and most people know what that thing is that's waiting for them. You know, sometimes it's really realizing, oh, I think I'm strong. I think I do all the things I want because maybe they have, you know, the relationship and they've got the high paying job and they're like, I'm courageous. I do all these things. But it's like looking at, okay, where do you have resistance? Mm. Where are you ignoring what's there? Where do you go into procrastination, right? Looking for some of those more subtle things to show us where there's a lack of courage. And sometimes if they don't know where that clarity piece is, we all will probably know where we're not being as directly courageous as we could be, right? So between those two things, I do find that as a coach, if you can ask good questions, as a speaker, as a speaker, as a coach, as a therapist, if you can ask good questions, once people answer that question, they'll never forget it. It's almost, it's almost like, yeah, it's, it's like a curse on a certain level. Like if a person asks you a good question and you answer it wholeheartedly, you'll never forget it and it will stick with you yeah. and it helps create action. I love that. I love that so much. And that good questions are so healing, right? Like they're yeah. such gifts and you're a good question asker, Morgan. Mm. So thank you, you. Yeah. You do well with that. Uh, one of my, one of my curiosities is there's so many messages that men get in our life that are not always helpful. So I'm curious about how you help people unpack some of the messaging that they've gotten, some of the, like how they align with, wait a minute, I've gotten this message, but I'm not feeling it. How do I break free from that? What are some, what are some of the strategies, helpful hints you have along the way to any of the men that might be listening to this? Yeah. One of the greatest things I think is maybe even just sitting down and like journaling, or if you don't have a journal, some people don't like to have a journal, use a notebook. You can write it all down, pull it out, shred it or throw it away but just kind of writing your story, yeah, you know, and you can lean into like, yeah, what things are a massive blessing in your past and what things were something that maybe you wish that you didn't experience from the past, mm-hmm. you know, and what part of those things from the past still kind of show up in the present day, you know, and that'll give an idea of a lot of times I feel like that sets kind of the railroad tracks for where we move. Mm-hmm. And then we have to be really conscious about the past to dismantle that like guidance system sure. so that we can actually have uh, freedom of choice moving forward. You know, so sometimes it's diving into that. It's just going through a good history and conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think most of us, I, I like the statement that 80% of everything's always working, mm. right? 80% of everything's always working. And usually when people come to us, they're focusing on the 20% that isn't. Yeah. Right. So if we can get them into gratitude about the 80% that's out there, we know there's improved health and happiness scores. You know, there's all these great things that happen. But then again, if we look at that 20% that's not working, it might feel like a plateau. It might feel like a place that you're bored. It might be a place that you show up as boring. 
Yeah. Um, it might be a struggle. It might be that thing that um, when it comes up, you'd rather choose Netflix, a substance, you know, scrolling through your phone. Like those are really great places to go. Okay. Like I don't even know what's here, but when this comes up, I get fidgety or I zone out or I, I reach for a ice cream sandwich, you know, whatever, whatever that might be, those type of things can at least point us in the right direction. Love that. Love that. So one of the pickles I have, so I do a ton of work with educators. I do a lot of work with women educators and I've been going down this road of boys in classrooms and how we tamper their energy a little bit, or they're too active or they're too busy or they're too this or too that. And I often say to the many educators, I'll say, what are the messages we're sending boys that are now playing out in our marriages where we're saying, you're not open enough. You're not giving me enough to talk about when they got these messages, when they were really little, like I'm too much now. So maybe I got to rein it all in later. So I think a huge piece for me in my journey is how do we help women also love men for who men are? Mm. And I'm wondering if you have any insight or any thoughts about just some things to help women in the journey of men becoming men. Yeah. Right. Wild question, right? Yeah. I think this will apply to everybody. So uh, when I lived in Seattle, I lived up there for a decade and they had these amazing places you could go do like a foot soak. Um, and they would also do like reflexology, but they would also give you a full body massage and truly like beat you up. And there was definitely a language barrier there. And they would do this thing where they would like pull the hair back and it always felt like it was pulling all my hair out and it would kind of hurt more than anything else they would do. And the only time that I actually said, Hey, could you do things a little bit softer? It like ruined the whole rest of my experience. It's like, I had asked them to be different than who they were. Mm. And then the whole rest of the time they played small. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying like, you know, when I have people come to my chiropractic office, I'm like, please tell me what's not feeling good. Right. I want clear communication. But, you know, if you think about communicating with the unconscious mind, like that's unclear communication. Yeah. Right. So when you tell somebody be different, be smaller, be quieter, be smarter, be skinnier, like whatever it is, men or women, when you ask them to be something other than what they actually are. They start trying to dance to something that's not them consciously or unconsciously. And then I think we can lose the beauty of who they are. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and to be honest, like moving, I moved a couple of years ago, like my income went down by 80%, right? I knew it was the right move. It was the right woman. I was coming back to Colorado. It was a massive blessing. All signs were yes. And yet it was still difficult. Sure. Right. And I would find myself tired, stressed, all of these things. And and my fiance, Stephanie, is just like the most vibrant, energized, like the two of you would love each other. Right. So upbeat and happy and joyous. And and one of my mantras for a while was just don't be a dick. Uh, right. Like don't squash her happiness. Don't don't rain on her parade. Like show up, be a good listener, ask good questions, you know. And I think if all of us can really realize there's this whole other life happening outside of us yeah. and just really embrace people for who they are and then celebrate the things that they're into. You know, there's mornings I wake up at like four in the morning and I'm like, I can't sleep. I'm going to I'm gonna go walk in the forest. And sometimes I come home, I've like climbed into the river at like 530 in the morning or and I'm like, there's this little bit of a wild animal piece of me. Yeah. That I'm so blessed still comes out. Yeah. And I know a lot of people would judge that. Make me wrong. Don't do that. You know, and like Stephanie loves all of the craziest things about me. Yeah. And so it's been really freeing to be like, oh, I need more of that in my life. So that and, I think is key. And I would imagine also like someone can love all these parts of me in my life. Yeah. What a gift. Yeah. Yeah. What a- it, she doesn't have to sign up to go put her feet in the river at five 30 in the morning. Right. But she can go, I love that about you. And maybe she does sign up for that yeah. and she doesn't have to, right? Like that's to me, that's such a beautiful way of saying like, 
I can be wild and I can be this huge person and I can have all these different parts of me. And I can also have this partner that may not have all those different parts or may have different parts that I also see value in. Yeah. Yeah. And I had it described to me at one point like this, like, you know, the idea of these like two universes, like coming together. Mm -hmm. right and realizing like I feel like I know so much about her but realizing I know still just a percentage of her there's Mm -hmm. still stories that come out that we've never heard before there's still behaviors that I notice that I'm like huh I've never seen that before right like so I get to stay curious I get to support who she is I get to be you know curious and interested about the things that she's into and not like judge her not shame her not try to make her be different yeah. You know, truly the idea of like, I want for her what she wants for herself. Right. Love you know, that. and when she does those things for me, which she does, it's just made it so easy to um, have more possibility in my life and, and truly get even deeper into who I actually am, which then raises energy, joy, love, compassion, you know, all the beautiful things we actually want in our our relationships with people. Yeah. I love that. Love, love, love that. Morgan, you're such a gift on this planet. I'm, I'm always just so thankful when you and I get to chat. And so my next question is about you. I want to know, what are you feeling passionate about? You were talking about like serving men, you're going to Mexico, like what is happening in your life that you feel passionate about? And if my people are listening and your people are going to listen, we're gonna have a lot of mutual people listen and be like, what is this conversation about? They want more Morgan. How do they get more Morgan? Like, what are the things that you're doing that you're just feeling so passionate about? Yeah. So one of the big things that's been a through line as well is, um, oh my God, the movie about Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. Ah, such a good movie. Yeah. I remember seeing that. I was just like in the audience, like weeping, like, it's just so amazing. (laughs) And, and like, he's just killing it at the the big live aid concert that they're doing at the end and and a part of me is like gosh i really want to be speaking to bigger audiences i want more impact and the message that was really clear that i received was like you can have that so easy through social media right it could be 10 people at a time 100 people at a time yeah. thousand people at a time and so at that point i really just opened up my business model a little bit more i just mm-hmm. wanted people to know that they had a resource and you and i have talked mm-hmm. about this you know, so on my website, drmorganoaks.com, yep. it's an easy way to reach out, get free resources. And I always put time available. Like if anybody just wants to get on a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. The number of times I've been like, oh my gosh, you need to see this person in California. You need to read this book, start with that YouTube video. Like there's so many resources so easily available on the planet. And sometimes we just need that person to help us get in contact with them. So resource wise, that's one of the big things that's driving everything. And then the last couple of years, I kept having this kind of like these nudges from the universe that I should be working directly with men. And the reality is in my chiropractic practice, mostly women and all the personal growth work I've done, mostly women, people coming to me for coaching work and shamanic work, mostly women. And I was like, gosh, like, I don't play, I don't care about sports, you know, watching sports, you know, I'm not going and getting wild at the bar. Like I'm not doing a lot of the quote unquote masculine things I was doing 20 years ago. I'm like, I don't even know how to reach this group. Right. You know, and I feel like a lot of the stuff that's online is, um, it's just not how I'm wanting to show up. It's not what I would want to be a part of. And it's certainly not what I want to offer. And I finally got to a point where I'm like, I'm going to offer what I would want. Love and it. So Yeah. So I took my first group of men down to Mexico last, you know, February of of this year and just had such an amazing time. So, you know, I've got another trip set up for February and that's like working with the shaman I met eight years ago and getting a tour of Chichen Itza from the guy that I met 11 years ago, who brings in all the spirituality of of that place and, and doing great high performance coaching work and shamanic drumming work and overcoming fear and really accessing courage. So that trip's one thing that, that I'm just really excited about. And then the other piece is how do you stay in consistent growth? Mm. Right. 
You know? uh, that's a, that word's always a trigger for me. You know, consistency is a really hard thing for me, Morgan. So go on, go on. I want to hear Yeah, that. for, for <laughs> everybody, right? That's why we have accountability partners and coaches yeah. and mentors. And, and so I am putting together a men's group coaching program. Mm. right so it makes it a little bit more affordable you're shoulder to shoulder with these other guys that you know have something in their life they're wanting to improve and and i really start with the framework of we're already great yeah right part of it's just recognizing our own greatness some mm. of it's redefining what success actually means to us not to you know somebody on the internet or the zeitgeist of america yeah. right and then helping people tap into clarity and courage and um, helping them find influence, helping them with like health and testosterone levels, um, but also getting a deeper connection to that heart and soul. And, and that way they can live a passionate life and, you know, address their career, their relationship, their health, you know, those things that are most important to them. So that's what I'm in the process of launching. And the reality is I just wanted to be surrounded by a bunch of good dudes that I resonated with so that I can keep learning all the things that I need to grow and that they need to grow. I love that. And I feel like for you and I, growing up in Wyoming, we're in these Western states, super high rates of suicide amongst our our men. And I have continued to have these conversations with men in my life about vulnerability, courage, strength, consistency, clarity, all those things. And some of what you've done for me today is really talk about the differences between your 20s and your 40s and the changes Mm -hmm. that happen. And men are not always talking about that in the way that other men need to hear. And I love that you're willing to provide a safe space for those conversations to be happening. And one of my favorite things about you, Morgan, this is really a Morgan love fest, to be honest. (laughs) One of my favorite things about you is you don't ever take anyone where you're not willing to go yourself. Hmm. And that is a huge value in my life, as well as in the people that are on this series of every person that's in the series that I'm interviewing is are people that are living this work. They're not just doing this work. The work is the work, but they're living it also. And so I just wonder what that is like for you as well. Yeah, I'm not coming up with a story or an example at this moment, but I know that something that's always been important to me, like if I saw somebody do something, I'm like, oh, that's possible. Yeah. Right. And I believe in the power of story. I believe in um, the power of some, if somebody else has gone through it, I can get through it as well. And yeah. so that's really helped me grow and evolve. And now I even get to a, a point where if I'm in something, I'm working with the coach, I'm you know, I started doing jujitsu uh, a year ago. I'm like this 48 year old white belt, which is hilarious. But, you know, like in class, I'll be like, so what's actually possible from this point? And then as soon as they tell me or show me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do that. Right. So I'm I'm just always trying to consciously expand that that realm of possibility. And I think when these stories get shared, when these even if it's a story of difficulty, it's like, oh, I'm not alone. If it's a story of difficulty plus movement, momentum, or even success, it's like, oh, I could do that as well. And so that's a a big part of the group. And it's been a big part of, you know, the last, gosh, since high school for me, there was something that happened in the high school football team that opened up possibility for me and it, it changed the rest of my life. Love that. Love that. Thank you for being with me today, Morgan. You are a gift and I am so deeply grateful for our connection and just how you always show up for me when I reach out and say, hey, I need some help and I need some support. And I am excited. I get to share you with my people. I get to share you with the world in the way that I know you. And the best way to reach you is your website. I would say that's the best way, drmorganoaks.com. And it's also drmorganoaks on like LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, and I really want to acknowledge you as well. Like I, I've i loved following your journey as well. I think it was probably maybe 2017 when we did like our coaching and got reconnected and occasionally we'll have these little catch-up conversations. I think I got some emails from you in the last couple of weeks. So I get to see, yeah, just all the beautiful things you're doing on the planet. So really grateful to to call you a friend. 
I love that. I appreciate you in this journey. And thank you so much for being with me today. I'm excited to see how this all goes out. We'll share it with everyone. And now my people get to know Dr. Morgan Oaks. Thanks yeah. for your time today, Morgan. Awesome. Thank you, Stacey.